Hi, I'm Eric Payne. And I'm Whitney Davis. And welcome to Off the Beaten Path, a show where we highlight historically relevant items to the African American experience. People, places, and artifacts that tell the history of African Americans through their perspective and therefore tell the story of America. We search to discover artifacts, mementos, and family heirlooms that will tell firsthand personal accounts from people who literally witnessed this history. People, places, and things that help us better understand the accomplishments and contributions of black Americans. Along with our team of collectors, novice historians, and family grills, we follow the path wherever it takes us. And as the great Maya Angelou used to say, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So come with us off the beaten path. Right. Hi, I'm Eric Payne. And I'm Whitney Davis. And welcome to Off the Beaten Path. Today we're at the beautiful Kipps Castle in Essex County, New Jersey. Kipps Castle is a historic landmark that's open to the public. So if you're ever in the area, you can come visit and walk around, or you can arrange to have photo sessions or weddings. So check out Kipps Castle. And Eric, mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's right, we have to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Duh, the big tree right in the background. And who are we visiting with today, Whitney? We are visiting with Lynn Taylor, who has an extens extensive personal collection of black or African-American dolls. Hey, Lynn, how you doing? I'm good, Hi, how are Lynn? you? Lynn is a good friend of mine from the antiques business. Right, got it. So, so Lynn, one thing I want to ask, is this your whole collection of black dolls or is it just this is part of the collection part of the collection. right I just chose several dolls that I think would be interesting to talk about and share so how long have you been collecting uh, I would say since um, the early 80s I see early 80s and what spawned your interest uh, um, when my daughter was born uh, someone gave her an antique doll and I was so intrigued by dolls that I didn't know really existed and that started this uh, search for antique dolls. So um, tell us a little something about the history and some of the dolls that you've decided to pull then. Because clearly it's more than just collecting dolls. There's uh, right. a personal significance to mm -hmm. you. So, so I know, I mean, obviously they all kind right. of look like us a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> what is uh... Well, let me start by saying when I grew up in the 50s, it was very difficult to find black dolls. Mm -hmm. Most of the dolls that I played with as a little girl were white dolls. Mm -hmm. And I agree, even in the 80s. Exactly, sure. in the 80s. There were several doll companies, I think one as early as 1909 out of Tennessee, and uh, it lasted for until 1915. There was another doll company in, I think, the 1940s. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had trouble with distribution, so the dolls were really hard to find. Right, right. One of the issues in, I guess, black America, as we tried to have our own economic engine, mm -hmm. sometimes you would f fall, run into those, some of those things. You might get the manufacturer, but you not, might not have the support from a distribution standpoint. Right. Or even enough store owners mm -hmm. who are willing right. to put these type of dolls right. to sell to our, our demographic, I, our, our uh, racial groups. So. Exactly. I think the, the thought was that only children who are black would buy a black doll. Mm -hmm. But actually, there are a lot of children who are not black who buy, uh, you know, dolls that are from different backgrounds. Right. right. So now I think it, it's now more they, yeah, now too. it's more. Uh, so I just think that the market just didn't think it was possible to make right. money or profit off of black dolls. Also because of the historical significance of mm -hmm. the United States and race relations exactly. and the issue of race in the U.S., right? right. So well, I think that was part of what, you know, spurned my interest in dolls, that some of the dolls um, that were very stereotypic. Mm -hmm. And when I saw dolls that weren't stereotype or weren't derogatory, I I just wanted to collect dolls that I thought um, you would be happy to have your daughter have. I see. I see. And that I thought would portray a positive image. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. So Lynn, I'm so excited to hear about these mm -hmm. dolls. Let's get started. Okay. Uh, I think we'll start at this end. And these dolls are, you can see, they're very similar, each doll, because they're by the same maker. And it was a woman out of England in the 1930s named Nora Wellings. And they're beautiful dolls. I think the dolls are um, dolls that are portray a positive image mm -hmm. of black uh, children, older women, 
but it's something that you could see in your house, you could see your child playing right. with. I think they are very positive and um, there's nothing exaggerated about their features. Yes, and this beautiful craftsmanship here mm -hmm. in the sewing. Right, and these dolls are made of cloth, uh, velvet, um, you know, synthetic hair, mm -hmm. but I think that the features are painted on, mm -hmm. but I think they're exquisite She's dolls. She's a true artist. Mm -hmm. She is an artist. Mm -hmm. and, and is there a particular time period that these are? Uh, 1930s is when she started. Wow. I don't know the specific dates of each of these dolls, mm -hmm. but I know that's when she started making. She was considered an artist. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were some doll makers and there were artists who made dolls, and she was considered an artist. Which makes them collectibles nowadays people say the people that make things for art mm -hmm. any type of thing that at one time is considered could, could fit in the toy category or whatever when you have an artist that engages in right. making that item right. it becomes a collectible exactly right? I'm learning okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a, a doll that I think is interesting because again it's a boy doll and there weren't a lot of men or boys that were portrayed in terms of dolls which makes me wonder who would have owned this or who would have wanted to play with this and also who made the dolls. Right. Because a lot of time there's we don't know the provenance of the dolls. We have right. no way of knowing really gen that we know a general idea of the age, but we don't know like where this doll was made. It could be or, a home homemade doll. It could too, be right? a homemade doll. A lot of the early dolls were cloth dolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, and a lot of dolls back to the time of the plantations were dolls where you had you know, scrap fabric around right. or whatever right. you had, seeds or beads, and you would use that to, you know, make the doll. Right. These two dolls would have been uh, dolls which would have been mammy dolls. Right. Um, but the thing I like about these dolls is um, the, the dolls are, um, are beautiful, and you can't deny the history of it. Mm -hmm.